15 budget-friendly air fryer meals coming your way. Now just a heads up, some of these were made like a few months ago, so what was a dollar per serving or a five dollar dinner then is definitely going to be a little bit higher just because, you know, inflation. Regardless, these are still super budget-friendly. And hey, since we're such a super awesome community, will you drop a comment below and share your best money-saving tip for mealtime? I'm gonna share mine at the end of this video. You ready? Let's go. Now my kids love ramen noodles, but I don't love the lack of nutrition. So here's an easy way to add a little healthiness. If you ever make a ton of chicken, you can slice it up and freeze it for later or buy one of these ready-made chickens and some vegetables that they'll actually eat. So just throw in however much you're gonna eat and throw some veggies in right alongside. And depending how full your basket is, you can do it at 380 for seven to 10 minutes. While that's cooking, cook up your ramen noodles like you always do. Then drain your ramen noodles, throw on the chicken veggies, mix it up and season as you wish. That is a healthy and easy way to doctor up your ramen noodles. Ask Jomi. Now go clean your room. It is something that my sister, Melanie, told me all about. It didn't really have a name, so I'm calling it a sweet potato hash. You'll just need a couple sweet potatoes, which are gonna run right about $3. A can of black beans, coming at you at 72 cents. One avocado. This one came in at $1.28. And then some Brianna's poppy seed dressing. Now this whole bottle costs $3.50, but I'm only gonna use like a tiny bit of it. So I'm gonna call it 87 cents. That's that's $5.88 for all of this. We'll get four servings, totaling $1.46 per serving. Peel and cube them. Drop them in your air fryer and then spray them with oil. Mix it around. I personally prefer avocado oil and I have my sprayer linked at airfryertools.com. Close it up and we're gonna cook this at 350 for about 12 minutes. And if you don't have the dual blaze kasori that has dual burners, you will want to set a shake reminder to flip that around halfway. While that's cooking, I'm gonna prep up these beans and my avocado. I've got some tomatoes that are feeling a bit neglected, so I'm gonna pull one of those out too. And they are done. These have been rinsed and drained. Just add however many beans you would like. This is gonna really bulk up the meal. No, I'm not really being graceful about it. Just gonna throw all the food and veggies on there. The cool thing about this is everybody can just put on what they like. Cause not everybody wants avocado. Then lastly, the dressing. Drizzle that on top. And oh my goodness, what a treat this is. Mm. And the more I eat this, the more I realize how filling it is too. Now this recipe I modified from my zucchini boats recipe. That's on page 49 of my cookbook, which you can find at yummyairfryerecipes.com. But since ground beef and even ground turkey is so expensive right now, I decided to use some quinoa instead. Now don't stop watching this video just because I said quinoa. Hear me out. Quinoa is great because it's rich in fiber and protein, and it also contains vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And the flavor profile isn't like crazy strong. My kids even like it. Now Walmart has a 10 serving bag and it's $3.27. And note that the price is totally wrong here on the shelf. I couldn't find the tag anywhere. But since I'm only using four servings out of this bag, the cost is gonna be $1.31. Now that's a lot cheaper than a pound of ground beef, right? The zucchini came out to $2.13, but just wait. Either you're gonna be planting some for the summer or somebody you know is gonna have an abundance of zucchini. So this is gonna be a great one to come back to and revisit all summer long. I'm gonna use the rest of my onions and peppers, which comes to $1.28. I've got a packet of taco seasoning for 38 cents and a little more cheese. I'm calling it at 63 cents. Total cost for this one is $5.39. Cut your zucchini in half and then scoop out the seeds. And I did need to cut off the ends of the zucchini a little bit. That way they can fit nicely in the air fryer. Then go ahead and just salt that a little bit. And you could spray it lightly with oil. It's just gonna help conduct the heat a little more. Then you're gonna wanna cook it at 380. And it's gonna really be anywhere from six to 12 minutes. Now, since these are really small zucchinis, I'm gonna go with just six minutes, but your big summer ones, they will definitely need more time. And I'm gonna saute these veggies too. I stirred them up in oil, add some salt, a 
run it from 380 for five minutes. Quinoa is so easy too. You just need a cup of quinoa and then two cups of water. You combine them, bring it to a boil, reduce the heat to low, and give it a cover. And just let it rest for 15 minutes. Okay, and now that it's done, just a quick little simple fork test to make sure that's tender enough. I, think I might just give mine about two more minutes. And that is what I love about the air fryer. You can just adapt and adjust. Yeah, that feels great. And 15 minutes later, it is perfect. Then I've got my sauteed veggies. I'm gonna just throw right in the quinoa and the taco seasoning and just mix that up. And now I clearly have enough filling, right? Just fill up the little boats with your quinoa and just spread that out in the little tunnels. I'm really not making it look very pretty, but that's okay. And load it up with cheese. And guess what? I've got leftover tomatoes. So I love cooked tomatoes. I'm gonna put that on mine. Then pop that in the air fryer. 380 for two to three minutes more. And check out that perfection. Oh, yummy. Do you want to try some zucchini? No. No? No, thank you. I think this is good. It is like those peppers that have all the meat inside them. It reminds you of stuffed peppers. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was really good. That's a five out of five for me. You like it? Mm -hmm. Five out of five? I you only like this stuff. A little messy, but definitely delicious. Five out of five for me. Two out of five. Two. Up next, we got honey garlic meatballs. You'll find it on page 43 in my cookbook, and you only need six ingredients. Meatballs are gonna come in at 74 cents per serving, and everything else you'll likely have on hand. The most expensive pantry item is the honey, which is gonna come to 16 cents per serving. We're gonna serve these meatballs over rice, which is 18 cents per serving, and some broccoli on the side, coming in at 28 cents per serving. Total cost for this meal, $1.36 per serving. Now you can do this in any air fryer and because the blaze has a burner there and up there, I'm taking the tray out and I'm just gonna use the pan and check it out. I can put all my meatballs there in the bottom in a single layer. Of course, you can always cut this recipe in half. We're gonna cook these at 350 for eight minutes. If you have a regular air fryer, you will want to rotate those at four minutes. And while that cooks, we're gonna make the glaze. I need a quarter cup of brown sugar and a one third cup of honey or 111 grams if you don't like to mess with measuring cups and sticky stuff. A half cup of ketchup or 136 grams two tablespoons of soy sauce, and three minced garlic loaves, or a half tablespoon. And just whisk that all up to combine that honey and the ketchup and everything. All right, now they're cooked through. I'm just gonna pour this glaze right on top. Even if you're using an air fryer that has the grates, you can still put the glaze on top. Maybe just save some for the end as well, but not gonna lie, it's pretty handy to just have it right here at the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna just stir those up and then pop them back in the air fryer and we'll just let it run for about two more minutes. Look how gorgeous those are right there, y'all. These could be a little standalone appetizer if you wanted. Now, here's something I've been doing lately with my frozen broccoli. In instances like this, I'm just gonna throw it right over the food in a single layer. I'm gonna bring it down to 3.30 and give it about eight minutes to cook it up. Because see, all in one, ready to go. Throw the meatballs and broccolis on top. And I got someone ready to taste test. This stuff is bussin'. On page 118 in my cookbook, the cost for this meal, one pound of the potatoes was 35 cents. That chicken sausage was the most expensive part, 4.48. I used a half an onion, 20 cents, and one green pepper with a total $5.80. After you de-seed your pepper, go ahead and cut those into one inch pieces. And I'm just gonna use a half of an onion today because I wanna save this for a different meal. The idea is just to get your veggies fairly even in size. And because the potatoes are so cheap, I'm using them as the star of the show. And to save time while cooking, you wanna cut these in nice little bite-sized pieces. That way they will cook faster. And because I'm doing a lot of potatoes, I'm gonna pop those in the air fryer and cook them up a little bit before I add those veggies. And to give it a little bit more of a fried effect instead of a baked effect, I'm gonna add that oil. 
we'll cook it at 370 for eight minutes and turn on that shake reminder. Give that a quick little stir pop that back in. And while that finishes up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these sausages. Just wanna get them bite-sized. These are pre-cooked, so it's really just a matter of heating them up. And now I'm gonna throw in those veggies, spray a little more oil, stir that up, and I'm gonna bump it back to 370 for about six more minutes. That's done. Ooh, that looks so delicious and it smells amazing. Now we'll just add that sausage. And remember, this sausage is pre-cooked, so I'm not really cooking it, I'm just heating it through. And now I'm gonna crank it up to 380 and give it about eight more minutes. Oh yeah, and make sure you've got a shake reminder or something to help you stir it halfway through. At this point, your sausage is probably cooked through. So it's really just gonna depend on how soft you like your potatoes and veggies. By the way, fun fact, this makes amazing leftovers with scrambled eggs the next morning. And check out that goodness. And teenagers, what do they think about this? Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Five stars all the way? Mm, definitely. Definitely. Okay, now I'm just gonna go fold that laundry right there. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> Some poor man's lasagna. This one is fabulous because you're gonna get 12 servings for a total of $10.36. That comes to just 86 cents per serving. I'm gonna make all of it now, but I'll assemble it in two parts and freeze the other half for another night. So first, we're gonna get that pasta going. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna start cooking up some ground turkey. And did you know that you can cook ground beef for ground turkey in your air fryer? I got my Kasori dual glaze air fryer today because I'm making like four recipes. I'm gonna save myself some hassle, put some foil here at the bottom, and then throw the grate right on top. Then I'm gonna just put a pound of this ground turkey right in here and kind of crumble it up or like squish it up. And then according to page 36 of my cookbook, we wanna cook this at 380 for about seven or eight minutes. Pop that in. And remember, I'm using the dual blaze. That means there's a burner on the bottom, so I won't have to shake this, but I do wanna kinda of break that meat apart. So I don't forget, I'm gonna just run it for four minutes first. Okay, there we are halfway through cooking. I wanna mix it up because I don't want these huge chunks. And I'm gonna add in my seasoning. Now it calls for a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, but I am all out of Italian seasoning. So I'm throwing in just a mix of parsley, oregano, basil, and a little garlic powder, and some onion powder. Look, that means my pasta's ready. Whatever Italian type seasonings you have on hand, and oops, I'm remembering these holes. Things kind of fall down in there, so. I'm gonna spread this out along the edges. And I just lifted that up, grab those chunks of meat. I just don't want them down there cooking in the grease. And we will just continue cooking. I'm gonna crank this up to 400 and give it about five more minutes. Pasta's done and we're gonna drain it. Now, a couple things. You're gonna add some softened cream cheese to this hot pasta, but I forgot to, but I have a solution here. We just wanna do it while it's still nice and hot. Also, I forgot to mention, you're only gonna use about three-fourths of a 16-ounce box or bag of penny pasta. I'm just gonna cube up this cream cheese, which you might wanna do either way, even if you have it kind of room temperature. And I could probably soften it a little in the microwave, but we're just gonna do it this way. Oh, there's the beef, but let's get this cream cheese soaking in the hot pasta. And I'm gonna just cover up that cream cheese with that hot pasta. That's gonna help it melt and get creamy. And while that gets nice and warm, let's check in our meat here. Here we go, that's nice and done. I'm gonna just line my cutting board with paper towels and you could just scoop that meat out. Or if you have the basket style of air fryer, you can just lift it out and dump it right onto the paper towel. And I'll just chop it up a little bit more here. And either way, all that grease, well, it dropped right down there to the bottom, which means I could just pick up that gross foil and drop it right into my trash can. And I'll just use a paper towel to grab any grease that I spilled out of that paper towel. And we are ready to start layering. Okay, you can see my cream cheese is mostly melted and I've got it all blended in. We have some cottage cheese we wanna add to this pasta mixture. So I'm gonna just jump into a little bit larger bowl since my pot wasn't huge. And we'll just mix that all together. 
And now we're gonna start layering. You have a couple options. If you wanna cook some of it right now, these Pyrex dishes from Costco, they fit in the Kasori Pro 1 and also in the dual flaze model. Or you can get like a nine by nine foil pan. You will need to lift up these ledges so it can fit in the Kasori Pro 2, but it fits nicely here in the dual flaze. So today I'm gonna fill this one for eating now and I'm gonna use this one for freezing for later. Then I'm gonna put some of the pasta in each container that I'm layering on the ground beef or ground turkey and then put some sauce over the top. Then we will repeat the layering, add the rest of the meat and the rest of the sauce. No, no, it does not need to look beautiful. Just spread it around and we will top it with some cheese. And of course, it's always cheaper to buy a brick of cheese and shred it up yourself. Place that cheese right over the top. Now this one is ready to cook. And if you are worried about flying cheese, I actually talk about this problem in my seven air fryer secrets video. I'm gonna link to that down in the description box below. Make sure you watch that after you watch this video. Before I cook up this lasagna, I'm gonna just preheat my air fryer at 400, just for about three minutes. And while that is just preheating for me, I'm gonna show you how to freeze this other pan. You're gonna to wanna to wrap it up in plastic, just nice and secure. And I'm just kind of pressing out any air. Then I'm pulling out my Costco heavy duty foil here. And I'm just gonna cover this all up nice and secure. Then you could just label it, excuse me, all I could find is a hot pink Sharpie marker here. And I'm writing all the instructions on there. And then also today's date, which is 6-6-22, which is Logan's birthday. Now that this air fryer is nice and warm, woo, I'm gonna carefully put that lasagna in there, close it up, and just let it sit. Then open it up. Everything's nice and melty, and now it's ready to cook. This recipe has been on my website forever, and so I just have oven directions to follow. If it's not frozen, you bake it at 350 for about 30 minutes, but we know that the air fryer is so much faster than that. So I'm gonna knock that down to 325, or you could run it at 330 if you don't have that five minute increment, and we'll do it. Let's start with 15 minutes. Okay, we are about halfway through. I just wanted to check on this because I have not made this one in the air fryer before. And it sure looks gorgeous on top. I'm just gonna use my internal temp reader here. And it looks like we do need a little more cook time. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this. Just to make sure these last few minutes don't mean that my cheese burns. But I think we're gonna be okay. Now it's ready. Oh, I like it when it's bubbly like that. So I can hear the sizzle. The cheese is looking nice and brown. Look at that beauty. I just love that you can pull this off. 86 cents per serving, let's go. And it only took 15 minutes in the oven. Did you know one serving of this costs less than a hamburger at McDonald's? Really? Yeah. Mmm. Okay, tell me the stars. Town, town. Or are we doing fries? Five out of five. Five out of five. So good. You want the whole pan? No, I want the whole pan. We need lasagna more often. Next, a tuna melt. Now I opted for this larger can of tuna because if you look at the price per ounce, you're gonna save a little bit more money if you buy in bulk. And since I wanted to do four sandwiches that were generous with the tuna, I went with one larger can. And you'll want some mayonnaise or Greek yogurt, of course. Now I wasn't gonna really buy a whole thing just for a scoop of mayonnaise. So I'm gonna call that 50 cents and I feel like I'm being pretty generous there. I should have grabbed some pickle relish because I love that in my tuna sandwiches. Now, it's important to me to have some good bread for my sandwiches. I just don't want that cheap cardboard stuff. So I did sacrifice a bit and pay a little more for the bread, but I'm only using eight slices, so the cost is 93 cents. Now, I love fresh tomatoes on my tuna sandwiches, so that's about 50 cents there. And I'm gonna add cheese to some of these sandwiches. So I'm gonna say it's about 80 cents worth. Now you could spray your bread with oil, but I'm gonna do butter today. 
I'm pricing a half a stick of butter at 50 cents and I really won't even use that much. Place the butter side down in the air fryer. I already topped it with the tuna. Throw on a little tomato and my poor little cheese slices here. I'm only gonna make one sandwich at this moment. So I'm gonna just put it here in the middle, but you can see there's actually a lot of room. I could do four sandwiches in here. And you can see I still have a ton of tuna fish left. And I'm gonna top that with one more slice of buttered bread and pop it in the air fryer. And I'm gonna run it at 350 for five to six minutes. And since I'm running it in my Blaze air fryer, there's a burner on the bottom and on the top. So that means I don't have to worry about flipping. And now, voila, delicious toasted sandwich. And listen to that delicious crunch. Yum, yum. Mmm, mmm. Total cost for this one is $4.99. Now this next one is eight hearty servings and I'm gonna freeze half of them. Let's make cowboy dinner. You're gonna need two pounds of ground turkey or ground beef, half of a yellow onion, about a cup of frozen corn, one and a half cups of salsa, a can of black beans that are rinsed and drained, and a cup of medium cheddar cheese or whatever kind of cheese you love. Then you can make your own homemade cornbread or be cheap and easy like me. These are like less than 50 cents a box. And I'm not sure if we're gonna need one or two for each half of the recipe, but I've got two boxes. This time I'm putting all two pounds of ground turkey in the air fryer. And I remember that Michelle gave me this tip about blocking these little holes with some foil. So I'm gonna do that and chop up half of that onion. And I can put the onions right on top of the meat. And again, 380. Since I have more meat in there, I'm gonna go six minutes first. Oh, it's looking good. I just want to stir this up, get those onions mixed in a little more. My foil's doing a pretty good job there. And I want to break up this meat a little bit more so it's not like a meatloaf. And then I'm just going to throw on some salt and pepper. And let's continue cooking that. It's got about five more minutes. I'm going to hurry and make up this cornbread. Just need a third cup of milk and one egg. Mix. And then I'm gonna let that rust. That one's done. Get it out of the air fryer and onto a paper towel and then just break it up a little bit more. Got my big bowl again. I'm gonna dump the meat right in the bowl. I'm gonna throw in that corn, the salsa, those beans, and just mix all of that goodness together. And because I've got cornbread involved, I do just wanna lightly grease my pan. And I'm gonna freeze half of this mixture in a freezer bag. Yes, I already wrote on it. But what I'm gonna do is just alternate my scoops of meat mixture into my freezer bag and into my dish, just so I can split it up fairly evenly. The second meal is done. This is gonna be perfect when I'm out of town and my husband's gonna make dinner for the kids. If you are gonna freeze, and it's gonna thaw out a lot quicker if you flatten it out. Plus, it's a lot easier to store in the freezer. So for just doing half the recipe, you just need to grate about four ounces of cheese. That is gonna come to, well, about a half a cup. Look how much that made there on the cornbread. So you could just do one box of this corn muffin mix, which by the way, it yields six muffins. And then you're just gonna scoop your batter right on top of this cheese mixture. Just gently spread it around. Yeah, use a wet finger to spread it. Probably will work a little better. Just do your best to cover everything up. Now this recipe comes from Mel's Kitchen Cafe. It's her cowboy dinner recipe. By the way, she does have a homemade cornbread recipe on here. The oven instructions say bake it at 40 to 45 minutes. That's for the full pan at 375 degrees. But in the air fryer, we are gonna just crank that down now with cornbread because that can kind of burn easily, especially when we have that heating element so close. I'm gonna pull this down to about 330, and instead of like 45 minutes, we're gonna do 15. And how does that sound? I like it. Okay, we are about nine, 10 minutes in. That's looking nice and golden. Let's just see if we can tell. It's about 155 inside. Just wanna see if that's cooked through. No, it needs, it needs a little more time. So I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. I'm not gonna cover this with foil, but if you wanted to at this point, you could cover it with foil to keep it from browning much more. 
I'm guessing we just need a few more minutes. Also, another option would be to like lower, you could lower your temp and then maybe cook it longer if you were worried about that top burning. Oh boy, I turned that back up to 330 and I did not check on it anymore, but oh, look at that. That looks really, really good. Let me just dig in the center here a little bit. That looks good. We are good to go. That looks so good. Mmm. Mmm. This just reminds me of like chili with cornbread on top. So good. What do you think? How many do you give it? Mmm. I'm gonna go a three out of five. A three? I'm gonna give it a four. Time for an avocado egg bake. Now stay with me here. My avocados right now are about $1.28 each and I'm using two for this recipe, although only one of them is ripe right now, so I'm going to just prepare one. But for our cost analysis, I'm running as two, which means you also need four eggs and eggs are 20 cents a piece. Whoa, Nelly. But having breakfast for dinner is a great way to save time and money. I still have some bread left, so I'm gonna use two slices of that. Total cost for this meal is $3.00. And 36 cents. So if you've got a ripe avocado, this will work so great. Cut it in half, and then pull out the pit. Yes, I'm sure there's a great tool for that. And we have this great little spot for an egg, but we do need to make a little bit more room and just put the extra avocado in a bowl for later. Now I'm gonna use parchment paper because this is gonna get a little messy. And putting bread in here is gonna just kind of help hold everything still too. Now you can butter your bread or spray it with oil. And then just crack your egg right there inside the avocado. It will spill over a little bit. So that's why the parchment paper is nice to have underneath. There we go. And I'm gonna throw on a little salt and pepper. And no, I'm not calculating that in my cost. Then carefully put that in the air fryer. And you're gonna run this at 370, anywhere from six to 12 minutes. It just depends on how done you like your eggs. I'm gonna hit my shake reminder button on this air fryer. It'll start beeping me at six minutes to check on it. Okay, six minutes in, and check that out. You might like it just like that, but that's too runny for me. I'm gonna flip my toast, there we go, and just lightly spray my toast. And I'm gonna give this a little more time. And here we go, 12 minutes later, whoop. Oh well, hello. <laughs> a little bit of explosion, I probably let it go a little too long, obviously with that toast, but it'll still taste good. Mmm. And final verdict. Wow, this is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Five stars? Five stars bean and cheese burritos. Now you can make refried beans from scratch and that'll cost you about 50 cents for this recipe, but I grabbed a can from the store. I'm gonna doctor them up just a little bit. Those came in at $1.24. And then I grabbed a brick of Colby Jack cheese. I'm gonna use it for a few different recipes. Buying in bulk is gonna save you a little bit more money. So for this recipe, I'm gonna use $1.84 of it. Then I needed some enchilada sauce. I probably won't even use all of this. So you could save some for another night, but we'll just say it cost me 80 cents. And then this pack of tortillas, comes in at $1.98. Total cost for this recipe is $5.86. And guess what? Yes, you saw last week, I got my stove top finally. We are loving it. So we're gonna just heat up these refried beans and they are an excellent source of fiber and protein. We want it to be a little bit smoother, a little bit more runny consistency so they spread easily. So that's why I'm warming them up and you can throw a little water or since I have some chicken broth, I'm gonna use that. Just stir it up to heat it up and get everything blended nice and smooth. And if you have spices on hand, you can just add these if you want to. I'm doing a quarter teaspoon of each garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, some oregano. And no, I did not factor these into the cost and that is because it is totally optional. And I'm gonna throw in a little dash of salt. And we're gonna just lightly spray the basket. And I'm gonna shred up half of this brick of cheese. It should make about two cups. And then set out your tortillas and go ahead and put some beans on each one. Throw in a little enchilada sauce and then just load in the cheese, yum yum. Now you'll see I've got a ton of room here. That's because we are gonna fold in and then roll them up. Very nice. Then just give them another light mist over the top. 
pop it in the air fryer and then you're gonna run these at 350 for about anywhere from four to six minutes. So if you want it more crunchy and more toasty, one tip is to oil it a little bit more. Then you can crank it up to 400 and run it for like one or two more minutes. And there we go, delicious. Here comes a delicious bean and cheese burrito. Mm. I gave that a four to five. I don't even like bean and cheese burritos, but this one was pretty good. Yay! Five out of five. Another great super affordable dinner is a baked potato bar. And baked potatoes in the air fryer are absolutely scrumptious. And for the baked potato dinner, our total cost, potatoes were 35 cents. The chili was $1.28. The sour cream, we only used about a quarter of it. 50 cents for some cheese. And those carrots on the side, 98 cents. Total cost for this dinner, $3.36. If you can get like even sized potatoes, all the better. But if not, it's okay. Give them a good scrub. Now in this instance, the air fryer does not cook potatoes faster. If you're gonna air fry them, you would wanna first dry them off. But I'm gonna do my little time saving trick. First, of course, pierce them with a fork. That's important to do no matter how you're baking them. I'm going to parboil these babies in the microwave first. Five minutes right there in the microwave. Potatoes have started to cook. We'll finish them in the air fryer. The good thing about the microwave is that it also dries them for the most part. They are a little bit hot. They've been resting for a few minutes. Now that I have them fairly dried off, I'm gonna spray these potatoes with oil. Yes, ma'am, I sure am. You can either massage oil on it or flip them and spray both sides. This just makes Oh my goodness, the inside of the potatoes taste fantastic. I'm also gonna salt these up a little bit. And I actually have the recipe for baked potatoes on page 131 in my cookbook. Normally we go like 40, 45 minutes. Since I parboiled these, I'm gonna cook these at 400 for 20 minutes. I wanna rotate them halfway through cooking and they're gonna be amazing. 20 minutes later, boom. Those are hot and ready. And check it out. Air fryer baked potato. Top it with some chili, sour cream, and even a little cheese if you want to. Throw some veggies on the side and dinner is served. Bean and veggie quesadilla. I'm just using the regular taco sized tortillas. They're eight inch tortillas and I'm only gonna use eight of them. So our cost for this one is $1.53. Then the rest of that cheese comes to $1.84 and I grabbed an onion and two peppers, but I'm only gonna use half of them and I'm gonna save the other half for another recipe. The onions didn't have a price listed, but on my receipt, you can see that I spent 42 cents. So the peppers and the onions together come to $1.28, and then the can of black beans is 72 cents. So total cost of this healthy meal is $5.39. And since I have the Blaze air fryer that has a burner on the bottom as well, I decided to take the tray out. And just because I don't necessarily love super fresh veggies, I wanna try sauteing these right on the bottom of the basket. So I'm just gonna spread them out a little bit. And I'm gonna go at 380 for about five minutes. And now, let's see how it did. I didn't stir at all. Hey, it didn't burn. Cool, that worked out great. Now my kids ate my other tortillas, so all I have left is four. But I got my sauteed veggies, I've got my beans that I've rinsed, and I still have quite a bit of cheese. Layer on that cheese, scoop on lots of those veggies, throw in some black beans. I got my lightly sprayed basket, and just carefully fold it in half, place it in the basket, and just kind of press them down a little bit. Now lightly spray the tops, and those are gonna blow open. So if you've got like a rack like this from your accessory pack, just set it on top, or you can just insert toothpicks to help it stay shut. Then we're gonna pop it in the air fryer, and we'll start with 370 for about five minutes. Let's see how it did, whoop. My toothpick over here broke, so that's what happens if you don't have it secured, but mmm, that'll be tasty anyway. And look how beautiful. Okay, verdict. Mm. Mm. Too many veggies? It's pretty good. That's a 3.5 out of five for me. Mm. 
so good. Chicken, veggies, seasonings cooked at the same time. And you could seriously have this one ready on the table in 15 minutes. So this will be the busiest part, just cubing up some chicken. You want about a pound of chicken breast in cubes. And then you're just gonna add in about 10 to 12 ounces of frozen veggies, any mix you want. Now my veggie mix here is 20 ounces, so I'm just gonna add half the bag in there. Now you'll add in two minced garlic cloves or a teaspoon of the jarred stuff. And we love garlic, so we've got another half teaspoon of garlic, a half teaspoon of chili powder, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and a whopping tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And then throw in a tablespoon of oil and just stir it all up. I like to stir it in a bowl because that way I don't lose any spices if I just do this right in the air fryer. Just get everybody coated first before I drop it in. Pull out the air fryer and dump it right into the air fryer. Then just level out the vegetables and the chicken. Pop it in the air fryer. We're gonna do 400 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. All right, we're five minutes in. Let's take a peek. Chicken's cooking. Wow, and I'm smelling all of those spices. Just gonna give it a quick stir and we'll let it finish cooking. And this one is done. Let's take an internal temp read. Since everybody cuts their chicken in different sizes, I'm just gonna take a check on my internal temp here. It is close, but not quite close enough. So I'm gonna throw it back in. Probably, it's close. Two more minutes. Let's go, two more minutes. I'll just give it one more quick stir here. Sure smells fantastic. Pop it back in for two more minutes at 400. All right, check it out. This one looks fantastic. And now we've got it up to 160 and then it will rest and come to temperature and be perfect to eat. Now you could do fresh veggies if you want, but a good frozen blend works out so great in the air fryer and it saves a lot of time. Let's take a bite of this. Mm -mm -mm. It's packed with the flavor. I definitely give this one five stars because oh my goodness, dinner ready in 15 minutes is the bomb diggity. I've been making these barbecue chicken burritos for a long time. Then when I added the air fryer to my process, wow, let's check it out. The first step is to get some cooked chicken. I love to do this right in my Instant Pot. I've got about a pound of chicken tenders. I just throw a cup of water in there and some salt and pepper, pop the lid on, and then I cook it at high pressure for 10 minutes. If I have frozen chicken breasts, then I would do probably 20 or 25 minutes. Then when it's done, release the pressure, take the lid off, and I drain the juice, and I just chop up my chicken right there in the Instant Pot with my meat chopper tool. Then I throw in a can of rinsed black beans, and then I add some corn. I like frozen corn instead of the canned corn. And then I just splash on some lime juice and dump in some barbecue sauce. With this amount of filling, you could easily do eight burritos, maybe even 10 to 12. And this recipe freezes so nicely, so you could use half of it now and then freeze the rest for another day. Then just dip some of the filling right on some tortillas, top it with some cheese, and then I grab some sour cream and use that as my glue and fold the tortillas in thirds and press them down flat. Lightly spray your basket, pop the burritos in there, and then lightly spray those. My sprayer is a little heavy here. <laughs> Cook it at 350 for five minutes and just flip it one time halfway through. Those are good, huh? And just like I promised you, here's one of my favorite money-saving tips for mealtime. First of all, scour your pantry, scour your freezer, use what you already have. Then go see what is on sale in your grocery store and incorporate that into your meal planning. Don't forget to share your own tips down in the comments below. And I've got more quick and easy air fryer recipes for you right here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.